one. Murder in the first degree, premeditated homicide, is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You've heard a long and complex case, gentlemen, and it is now your duty to sit down to try and separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead, the life of another is in your hands. If there is a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then he must be found guilty. Whichever way you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. You are faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you, gentlemen. The jury will retire. You know something? It's hot. You'd think they'd at least air condition this place, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd like to drop dead in that courtroom. Okay, gentlemen. Everybody's here. If there's anything you want, I'm right outside. Just knock. I never knew they locked the door. Sure they locked the door. What do you think? I don't know. It just never occurred to me, that's all. Oh. Six days. I should have finished it in two. Talk, talk, talk. You ever hear so much talk about nothing? Well, I guess they're entitled. Everybody gets a fair trial. Well, why the system? I suppose you can't say anything against it. <coughs> What's the matter? You got a cold? Yeah. These hot weather colds are killing you, you know. All right, gentlemen, let's take seats. In order, please. Okay. You better make this fast. 
I got a couple of seats for the celebration tonight. I must be the only guy in the whole world who hasn't seen it yet. Okay, Your Honor, start the show. How about sitting down? The gentleman at the window. How about sitting down? Well, it's rather hard to figure here, though. A kid kills his father, bang, like that. Well, it must be the element. Everybody here? The, the old man's in the, the other room. You'd like to get started? Oh, uh, uh, forgive me, gentlemen. Uh, I didn't mean to keep you waiting. All right, I'll just take your seat. Cool. All right, now you gentlemen can work this any way you want to. By that I mean I'm not going to give you any rules. Well, you can uh, discuss it. Let's, let's vote now. Who knows, maybe we can all go home. Yeah, let's right. find out who's let's where. Anybody doesn't want to vote? Okay. <clears throat> all those voting guilty, raise your right hand. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's eleven for guilty. I was voting not guilty. One. Okay. It's eleven to one for guilty. Now we know where we are. Well, somebody's in left field. You think he's not guilty? Well, I, I don't know. I never saw a guilty man in my life. You sat right in the courtroom, heard the same thing we did. Man's a dangerous killer. See it. Well, he's a 19-year-old boy. Well, that's old enough to knife his own father. They proved it. Did you believe him? I don't know if I believed him or not. Maybe I didn't. Well, so what did you vote not guilty for? Well, there were 11 votes for guilty. I don't know. It just isn't so easy for me to hold up my hand and send a boy off to die without uh, uh, talking about it a little. Well, who says it's easy for me? I didn't say it was easy for you. But just because I voted fast, I think the kid's guilty. You couldn't change my mind if you talked for a hundred years. But I'm not trying to change him. I'm just trying to say that I think we should uh, talk about it a little. Well, no, so this kid's been kicked around all of his life. I mean, raised in the slum. His mother's been dead since he was nine years old. That's not a very good head start. Well, what's that got to do with the price of coffee? I just feel that we owe him a few words. Oh, all right. We're, we're all grown-ups here. You're not trying to tell us that we're supposed to believe his story, knowing what he is. I've lived among them all my life. You can't believe a word they say. You know that. That's a terrible thing for a man to believe. Since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? All right. If it's not Sunday, we don't need a sermon. But what this man says is very dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like gentlemen. Right. If we're going to discuss the case, Let's discuss the facts. I think that's a good point. We have a job to do. Let's do it. If you gentlemen don't mind, I'm going to open the window more. <coughs> Perhaps if we if we each took a turn, you know, try it on for size. That's a good idea. Supposing we go once around the table, huh? Okay, let's get started. Right. Now I guess you're first. <coughs> oh. Well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. I mean, nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open his mouth. That's in the Constitution. Well, sure, I know that. What I meant was... Well, I, I just think he's, he was guilty. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one, let's take the old man who lived downstairs, the second floor in the room right underneath where the killing took place. At ten minutes after twelve on the night of the murder, he heard loud noises in the upstairs apartment. He said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the kid say to his father, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard a body falling. He ran to the doors of the apartment, looked out, and saw the kid running down the stairs and out of the house. That's when he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. 
<laughs> what else do you want? The boy's entire story is flimsy. He claims he was at the movies. Now, that's ridiculous. He couldn't even remember the names of the pictures he saw. Well, what about the woman across the street? If her testimony doesn't prove anything, nothing does. Let's go in order. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, here's a woman who's in bed. She can't sleep. It's hot, you know. Anyway, she looks out her window across the street and sees the kid stick the knife into his father. He's known the kid all his life. Well, uh, this is right across the street. She looks through the window across the L tracks and sees him do it. She swore that she saw him do it. Through the windows of a passing elevated train. But it was proved in, it was proved in court that you can look through the windows of a passing elevated train and see what's happening on the other side at night. It was proven. Let, let me ask you something. How come you believe her? She's just one of them, too, isn't she? You're a pretty smart young fellow. Just a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What are you going to get off? Get you all upset for it. Relax. Let's, let's all just calm down. It's your turn. Um, I'll pass it. That's your privilege. How about you? Well, uh, well, I don't know. When, uh, when you look at it, what, what more is there to say? Well, look, I got something to say. I think we're just wasting our time. Look at the kid's record. When he was 15 years old, he was in reform school. He stole a car. Then they picked him up for knife fighting. I think they said he stabbed somebody in the arm. It's a very fine boy. Ever since he was five years old, his father's beat him up regularly. He, he used his fist. Well, so would I with a kid like that. That's right. It's a kid. I got a kid. When he was eight years old, he ran away from a fight. I saw him. I told him right out, I'm going to make a man out of you, or I'm going to bust him in little pieces. Try him. And then when he was 15 years old, he hit me in the face. He's big, you know. Kids, you work your heart out. I haven't seen him in three years. Come on, let's get out of here. We're missing the point here. We're not dealing with juvenile delinquency. This boy, let's say he's the product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. We can't help that. We're not here to go into the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are. I know it. You know it. You said something there, mister. I don't want any part of them, believe me. I've lived in a slum all my life. Oh, wait a second. I used to play in a backyard that was filled with garbage. Maybe it still smells on me, huh? Look, there's nothing personal here. We're... There is something personal here. Come on, he didn't mean you, fella. Let's not get so sensitive. I can understand this sensitivity. Look, let's stop this bickering. We're wasting time. It's your turn. Oh, well, I, um, I had a peculiar feeling about the trial. I felt that the, uh, the boys, that, or the, uh, the counsel for the defense, uh, didn't, uh, make a thorough enough cross-examination. There were too many questions left unasked. Well, what about the ones that were asked? For instance, let's talk about that cute little switch man. You know, the one that nice, honest kid admitted by him. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about that. I I'd like to see that knife if I could again, Mr. Foreman. Could we get it in here? We all know what it looks like. I don't see why we have to look at it again. What do you think? The gentleman has the right to view exhibits in evidence. Here's me. This knife is a pretty important piece of evidence, don't you agree? Oh, yes, yes, it is. The boy admits buying a switch knife that night at a neighborhood store at about 8 o'clock. When the storekeeper was arrested, he identified the knife as the only one of its kind that he had in stock. Why did the boy get it? As a present for a friend of his, he says. Am I right so far? Right. You right. bet. Right. Now listen to this man. He knows what he's talking about. Next, the boy claims on the way home that the knife must have dropped through a hole in his pocket because he never saw it again. Now there's a story, gentlemen. You all know what happened. 
the boy took the knife home and a few hours later stabbed his father and even remembered to wipe off the fingerprints. Everyone connected with the case has identified this knife. Now, are you trying to tell me that someone picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house, and stabbed the father just to be amusing? No, no, I'm just saying that it is possible that the boy lost the knife and that somebody else stabbed his father with a similar knife. I just say it's possible. Take a look at that knife. That's a very strange knife. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible piece of coincidence? I'm not trying to make accept anything. I just say it's possible. But I say it's not possible. What are you trying to do? Yeah, what is this? Who do you think you are? Look, it's everybody everybody it. Look at it. Look at it. It's the same knife. Where did you get it? I, I bought a little junk shop around the corner from the kid's house last night. Two dollars. Now listen to me. You pulled a real smart trick here. But you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. The boy lied, and you know it. Maybe he lied. I don't know. Do you think he lied? That's a stupid question. Of course he lied. Do you think he lied? I don't know. Say... What do you think you're going to accomplish, sir? If you get stubborn and hang this jury, they'll just try the kid again and find him guilty as sure as he's born. Well, you're probably right about that. So what are you going to do about it? We can be here all night. It's only one night. A man may die because of us. Well, whose fault is that? Look, why don't we take this again step by step? What I mean is if you have no, a piece of evidence... nobody forced the kid to kill his father. How do you like that guy? Nobody forced him to do it. I can't understand, understand a word. Must we all talk at once? He's right. He's right. I think we just ought to get on with it. Now, everybody sit down. What do you say? You're the one that's holding up the show. All right, I, I've got a proposition to make. I want to call for another vote. And I want you 11 gentlemen to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. And if there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't stand alone anymore. We'll take in a guilty verdict right away. Okay, let's do it. Sounds fair. Everyone agreed? Pass these along. <laughs> We return now to Westinghouse Studio One and 12 Angry Men. Stories about a poor little slum kid who just couldn't help becoming a murderer. 
and you change your vote. If that isn't the most, the most ridiculous... Now, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Please, moment, please, please, please. I, I would like to say something here. I have always thought that, that a man was entitled to have unpopular opinions in this country. This is the reason I came here. In my own country, I'm ashamed Look, what are we supposed to do now? Listen to the whole history of your country? Yeah, look, let's stick to the subject. I want to ask you, what made you change your vote? He didn't change his vote. I did. Maybe you'd like to know why, hmm? No, we wouldn't want to know. A man why. wants to talk. Thank you. This gentleman chose not to stand alone against us. Well, that's his right. He left the responsibility entirely up to us. He gambled for support, and I gave it to him. All right, now the speech is over. Let's go on. Look, buddy, got me excited. You know how it is. I didn't mean to get nasty. Person, sure. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey, you. I'd like to ask you something. If the kid didn't kill him, who did? Well, we're, we're not concerned with anyone else here. Our job is just to figure out whether the boy who's, who's on trial here is guilty. Guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, that's a very important thing to remember. Everybody's a lawyer. You said a mouthful. Look, the old man heard the kid yell, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard the father's body falling. He saw the kid running out of the house 15 seconds after that. That's right. And let's not forget the woman across the street. She saw the killing. Now, if that doesn't convince I'm you... I'm sorry, it's not enough for me. The woman saw the killing through the moving cars of an elevated train. The train had five cars, and she saw it through the last two cars. She remembers the most insignificant details. What are you going to say about that? I don't know. It just that doesn't sound right to me. Well, suppose you think about it. Yeah, lend me a pencil. Uh, it's your turn. Might as well pass the time. Oh, wait a this minute. This isn't a game. Do you think you are? Take it easy, fellas. I've got a good mind to walk around this table and belt the Now, please, please. I'm hurt. Wait a minute. Now, listen, take it easy. I'm breathing. I'm sitting down. Come on, take it easy. Who does he think he is? Sit down. Wait a minute. Now, just... Now, look at this sketch. Now, there's an elevated train with five cars. Now, that elevator train was going past the old man's window at the exact second of the killing, according to the woman across the street. Do you know what kind of a noise that makes? Now, now remember the old man's testimony. I'm going to kill you, and then one second later, one second, he heard a body fall. Now, now just think about that for a moment. Do you think it's possible he could have heard this boy say, I'm going to kill you with an elevated train roaring past the end of his nose? What do you mean? Sure, he could have heard it. He could? He said the kid yelled it off. That's enough for me. I don't think he could have heard it. Well, maybe he didn't hear it. I mean, with the yell noise and all. What are you people talking about? You're calling the old man a liar? Well, it, it stands to reason. crazy. Right? Why would he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention, maybe. You keep coming up with these bright sayings. Why don't you send one into a newspaper? They pay two dollars. Uh, why, my dear Blight, sir, go ahead. You have a right to speak. Well, it's just that I looked at him for a very, very long time. He was a very, very old man with a torn jacket. And he carried two canes. Now, this is uh, a quiet, frightened, insignificant man who, who has been nothing all his life and who had never had any recognition. Nobody knows him after 75 years. Gentlemen, that is a very, very sad thing. A man like this needs to, to be recognized, to be quoted just once. This is very important. That's the most fantastic thing I've ever heard in my life. How can you make up things like that? What do you know about it? I speak from experience. Is there anything else? <coughs> Anybody want to come?
cough drop. Come on, let's get on with it. Oh, yeah, I'll take a cough drop. Thank you. Now, look, I've got something to say. Now, I think <clears throat> now, we have proved that the old man couldn't possibly heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. But let, let's suppose that he did hear it, that he really did hear it. Now, this phrase, how, how many times has each of you used it? Junior, if you do that again, I'm going to kill you. We say it every day. It doesn't actually mean that you're going to kill somebody. Now, wait a minute. The phrase was, I'm going to kill you. And the kid shouted it out at the top of his lungs. Anybody says a thing like that the way he said it, they mean it. How they mean it? You think he'd shout out a thing like that so the whole neighborhood would hear it? I don't think he would. He's too, too bright for that. Bright? Why, he's nothing but a common ignorant slob. He don't even know how to speak English. He doesn't even know how to speak English. I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Vote is now nine to three in favor of guilty. Oh, brother. You come in here and pull stories out of the thin air. I suppose now we're supposed to believe that the old man didn't get up out of bed, didn't run to the door, and didn't see the kid go down the stairs 15 seconds after the killing. He's only saying he did to be important. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did the old man say that he ran to the door? Ran? Walk? What difference does it make? He got there. Where, where was the old man's bedroom again? Down the hall away. You're supposed to remember everything. Don't you remember that? No. Yeah, uh, Mr. Foreman, could we see the, uh, the diagram of that apartment again, please? Why don't we run this whole trial all over again so that you can get everything straight? Mr. Foreman, could, could we please... I heard you. <clears throat> all right, what is all this? Why, how come you're the only one in the room that has to see exhibits all the time? If we have to wait for all that nonsense about where the body was found, we don't. We're just going to try to find out how an old man who's had two strokes in three years and walks with a couple of canes can get up and get out of bed and get through the front door in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. No, he said 15. How long does he know? How does he know about 15 seconds? How do you judge a thing like that? He said 15, and he's very positive. He's an old it. man. You saw him. Half the time he's confused. How, how can he be positive about anything? Now, uh, look, uh, will you do me a favor? Wake me up when this is all over. All right, now here is the apartment where the killing took place. As you remember, the old man's apartment is beneath and exactly the same. Now, here's the elevated train. A bedroom, a bedroom, living room, bathroom, kitchen. And here's that hallway and front door. Now, the old man says that he was in bed in this room, right? He got up, uh... Went through the hallway out to the front door and opened it just in time to see the boy come rushing down the stairs. Hmm? Now, his bed is at this window. And it is uh, 12 feet from his bed to the bedroom door. And the length of the hall is uh, 43 feet 6 inches. Now, he would have had to get out of bed uh, get his cane, right? Walk 12 feet, open the bedroom door, walk 43 feet, open the front door. And all in 15 seconds. Now, you think that's possible? You know it's possible. He can only walk very slowly. They had to help him into the witness chair. You make it sound like a long walk. It's not. Here, just, uh... I'm going to try something here. I'm just going to find out how long it took him. Let's see. I'm going to taste off the length of this bedroom. That's uh, 12 feet now. You're crazy. You can't reconstruct a thing like that. Uh, perhaps if we could see it. This is a ridiculous waste of time. Well, let him do it. Uh, hand me this chair right here, would you please? Now, let's assume that this chair here is the bedroom door of the old man's room. From this chair to the door of this room here and, and back is 40 feet. Well, anyway, it's, it's shorter than the length of the hallway. Wouldn't you say that? A few feet, Bill. Oh, this is absolutely insane. What makes you think you can prove that? Well, let me try it. According to the testimony, it'll only take 15 seconds. Surely you can spare that. Now, uh, you, you're going to watch for the second hand? Oh, uh, I have. Oh, good. Now, when you want me to start, stack your foot. That'll be the, the body falling. And just time me from there. 
Oh yeah, and let's say that he keeps his uh, chains right close for the bedside. Hmm? All right. All right. Oh, okay, I'm ready. Just a second. Oh, come on, speed it up, speed it up. The old man walked twice as fast as that. I think this is even faster than the old man walked. Okay, okay, if you want me to walk faster, I will. Stop. What's the time? Just, just a second. So it's 20, exactly 28 seconds. 28 seconds. It's my guess that the old man was trying to get to the front door. He heard someone rushing down the stairs and he assumed that it was the boy. Assume. Sure, sure. I, I think that's possible. Assume. Now, listen to me, people. I've seen lots of dishonesty in my day, but this little display takes the cake. Tell him, will you? What's the matter with you people? The kid's guilty. He's got to burn. We're letting him slip through our fingers here. Slip through our fingers? Who are you, his executioner? I'm one of them. Maybe you'd like to pull the switch. For this kid, you bet I'd like to pull the switch. Well, I'm sorry for you. Don't start with How me. How it must feel to want to pull a switch. Shut up. You want this boy to die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. Shut You're up. a sadist. Shut up! You don't actually mean that you'll kill me, do you? We return now to Westinghouse Studio One and Twelve Angry Men. Anything wrong, gentlemen? I heard some noise. No, there's nothing wrong. I don't see why we have to behave like children. Nor do I. We have a responsibility. This is a remarkable thing about democracy that we are, what's the word, notified. That we are notified by mail to come down to this place and decide about the guilt or innocence of a man we have not known before. That we have nothing to gain or lose by our verdict. This is one of the reasons why we are strong. Now make it a personal thing. Well, we're still nowhere. Anyone have an idea? Well, uh, how about trying another vote? Mr. Foreman? It's all right with me. Anybody who doesn't want to vote? All right. Supposing I call off your jury numbers. I vote guilty. Number two? Not guilty. Number three? Guilty! Number four? Guilty. Number five? Not guilty. Number six? Not guilty. Seven. Gilly. Number eight. Uh, not guilty. Number nine. Not guilty. Number ten. Guilty. Number eleven. 
Not guilty. Number 12. Guilty. Go to six to six. I tell you the crime is being committed right in this room. I'm ready to walk into court right now and declare a hung jury. I'd go for that too. Let the kid take his chance for 12 other guys. You mean you still don't think there's room for a reasonable doubt? No, I don't. Uh, I beg your pardon. Maybe you do not understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you mean I don't understand? Who do you think you're talking to, me? What do you mean with this guy? He comes running over here for his life and before he gets a deep breath, he starts telling us how to run the show. The arrogance no, no, of no, it. Wait, wait a minute. Well, nobody's asking where you came from. I was born right here. Or where your father came from. Maybe it wouldn't hurt us to take a few tips from people who come running here. Maybe, maybe they learn something we don't know. We're none of us that perfect. Look, let's stop the arguing. Now, who's got something constructive to say? Well, there's one thing been bothering me a little. And that's the whole business about this stab wound. The way it was made, the downward angle. Oh, don't tell me we're going to start that again. They went over it and over it and pulled it. I know they did. But I don't happen to go along with it. Now, this boy is five feet eight inches tall. His father was six foot two. Now, that's a difference of six inches. It seems to me a very awkward thing to stab down into the chest of a man who's half a foot taller than you are. Now look, you're not going to be satisfied till you see it again. I'll give you a demonstration. Somebody stand up. Watch this. I don't want to have to do it again. Is that six inches? That's more than six inches. All right, let it be more. That's not funny. What's the matter with you? Calm down, will you? Nobody's hurt, are they? No, no, nobody's hurt. All right, there's your angle. Take a look at it. Down and in. That's how it was done. Down and in. I guess there's no argument, huh? Uh, look, I want you to watch something here for just a moment, please. Now. Now, doesn't that seem like an awkward way to handle a knife? What have I been saying? Wait, wait. Now, watch this. Here. Wait a minute. Give me, give me the knife. Did you ever see a knife boy? Yes, I, I have in my own neighborhood. Too many of them. <laughs> it's funny, I didn't think about it before. I, I guess you try to forget things like that. Anybody who's ever handled a switchblade before would, would never have stabbed downward. You don't use a switchblade that way. You, you use it underhand. Well, then, he couldn't have made the kind of wound that killed his father. Not if he'd ever had any experience with switchblades, no. I don't believe it. I don't either. You're giving us a lot of mumbo-jumbo. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. What about you? Look, I want to tell you something. I'm getting a little sick of this whole thing already. Let's break it up and go home. I'm changing my vote to not guilty. You, you what? You heard me. What kind of a man are you? 
playing like this with a human being's life simply because there are some theater tickets burning a hole in your pocket. This is an ugly and terrible thing to do. But you can't talk like that to me. I can talk like that to you. If you want to vote not guilty, then do so because you are convinced that the man is not guilty, not because you're in a hurry. Look, I don't have to tell you why I... Don't you have the guts? Say it. Why do you vote not guilty? Because! I don't think he's guilty. I, I want another vote now. All right, there's another vote called for us. I guess the quickest way would be by a show of hands. Everyone agree? All right, all those voting not guilty, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those voting guilty, raise your hands. Three. The vote is nine to three in favor of acquittal. I can't understand you people. How can you believe that this kid is innocent? You know how these people lie. I don't have to tell you that. They don't know what the truth is. They, they, look, I want to tell you another thing. They don't need any big reason to kill somebody either. They drink and they get into a fight and bang, somebody's lying in the gutter. Nobody can blame them because that's the way they are. Don't you see what I mean? They're, they're, they're violent. Human life doesn't mean as much to them as it does to us. Where are you going? Look, these people are drinking and fighting all the time. And if somebody gets killed, somebody gets killed. They don't care. Most of them, well, it seems they, they, they haven't got any feelings. They, uh, they'll do anything. Say, what's going on here? L listen to me. There isn't one of them that's got any good in him. Not one of them. You listen to what I tell you. That kid that's on trial there. Don't you know about him? What are you doing? Look, I'm trying to tell you something here. You won't even listen to me. I, I, I've had enough. You open your mouth again, and I'll split your skull. Sit down. I still think the boy is guilty, and I'll tell you why. The most damning piece of evidence came from that woman who said that she actually saw the murder committed. That's right. As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important testimony. She went to bed at about 11 o'clock that night. Her bed was right at the open window. She could look across the street and into the other window. She tossed and turned for about an hour, unable to sleep. Finally, at about 12.10, she turned toward the window, looked across the street, and saw the boy stab his father. Now, to me, that's unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. Frankly, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. What do you think? Well, maybe. There's so much evidence to sift. But you can throw out all the other evidence. That was my feeling. Does anybody know the correct time my watch seems to start? One minute of six. Is that late? You don't suppose they could let us go home and finish this tomorrow, do you? I got a kid at home with a month. Not a chance. Pardon me. Can't you see that clock without your glasses? Well, not too clearly, why? Well, well, what do you do when you when you wake up at night and you want to know what time it is? What are you talking about? I put on my glasses and look at the clock. A and you don't wear your glasses to bed. Are you crazy? Nobody wears glasses to bed. W what's all this for? Well, I, I was just thinking. The woman who testified that she saw this killing wears glasses. Well, she wouldn't wear the glasses to bed, would she? 
Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did she wear glasses at all? I don't see... Of course she here. did. The woman wore bifocals. I, I remember this very clearly. They looked quite strong. She did wear glasses. Honey, I forgot. Let's... She, she wasn't wearing her glasses in bed. That's for sure. You're right. She testified that in her tossing and turning, she rolled over and looked casually out the window, and the crime was taking place as she looked out. And a split second later, the lights went out. She couldn't have had time to put on her glasses. Look, I think that this woman honestly thought that she saw this boy kill his father, but I tell you what she really saw. A blur. Just a blur. How do you know what she saw? How does she know all these things? Well, does anybody still say that there's not at least a reasonable doubt? No. Well, I think he's guilty. <laughs> anybody else? No. I'm convinced. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. Am I all right? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But, closure. I think he's guilty. Now, what else do you want? Your argument? I gave you my arguments. But we're not convinced. We want to hear him again. We have the time. Listen, what's the matter with you? There's a guy. You've made all the arguments. You can't turn now. Stick with me. I'm sorry. There's a reasonable doubt in my mind. We're waiting. Well, you're not going to intimidate me. I got a right to my opinion. It'll be a hung jury. That's it. Well, there's nothing we can do about that except hope that some night, a few months from now, you'll get some sleep. But now you're all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. Murder in the first degree, premeditated homicide, is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You've heard a long and complex case, gentlemen. It is now your duty to sit down to try and separate facts from facts. 
one man is dead, the life of another is in your hands. If there is a reasonable doubt in your mind as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then he must be found guilty. Whichever way you decide, 